Yokosomina, welcome back to the channel. We're continuing our exploration of the names of Dragon Ball and more specifically the Red Ribbon Gun. Are you ready? Let's go. Igeze. Okay, so uh, we're back here with uh, Tankobon Volume 6 and we're continuing our exploration of the Red Ribbon Gun. Uh, as you can see on the cover, uh, there are a couple of spelling mistakes in English there, which is uh, quite uh, often the case uh, with Japanese manga, as the authors aren't always good at spelling English correctly, or they just transcribe the way um, the English word is pronounced in Japanese. Now, before uh, we continue with the uh, Red Ribbon Gun, um, we're going to make a little sidestep, because in the story, uh, Son Goku arrives at Nishi no Miyako. Miyako means uh, capital city, so the capital city of the West. Nishi means West, or the Western uh, capital city. It's the first time he visits uh, a big city, uh, meaning uh, which which uh, which is the reason why he looks so. Uh, uh, so surprised. Uh, the reason he goes there is because he wants to go uh, visit uh, Bulma uh, and as he encounters her she addresses him as Son Kun as you can see here on the screen. Um, now Son Goku shortened to Son and then you add the suffix Kun uh, is something you will often see in uh, Japanese. Kun is a suffix uh, that replaces San. San is the more neutral term for uh, addressing a person. Uh, it can replace the word Mr. in English. And Kun is a more familiar term. Uh, and often in Japanese what you, what you will have is that uh, people will address someone they're familiar with, with the suffix Kun, and they will also uh, shorten their name. So for example, uh, Hayato, which is a, a Japanese first name, uh, can be shortened to Haya, Hayakun. Right? They, they shorten uh, all kinds of names uh, and they add uh, Kun to it. So this is what Bulma does here, indicating she's already quite close to Son Goku and uh, they have a very familiar uh, relationship. So they visit her, uh, her homestead, which is the Capucelle Corporation in Japanese, uh, taken from the English Capsule Corporation. Uh, the company that makes all those uh, capsules uh, that we see throughout the story. And this is a great time for us to meet uh, her family members. So the first we meet is Brief Hakase, which is her father. Uh, Hakase means uh, professor, doctor. Uh, so Professor Brief. Brief is uh, Japanese for the English word brief. Now briefs are usually, uh, as you can see on the screen, again, Underwear, which is typical for Bulma's uh, family, as her name is also taken from uh, underwear. In this case, it's uh, men's underwear, usually uh, short cut along the, the thighs, as you can see on the screen. Those are typical briefs. Um, her son, uh, later on in the story uh, of Bulma, uh, Trunks, comes from the word trunks, and trunks are then similar uh, men's underwear but uh, with longer uh, sleeves along the thighs. Her mother also makes an appearance, but uh, she's only referred to as Bulma no Haha, so Bulma's mom. She doesn't have a name or they don't uh, show her name in the, in the manga. I've checked various reference works uh, and interviews uh, by Toriyama Sensei. I couldn't find her name anywhere, so if somebody uh, found a source for her uh, for her actual name or maiden name. Uh, please uh, write it down in the comment. I would be very interested to hear about that. Uh, but I couldn't find anything uh, uh, where I looked. She also has a sister, but she isn't mentioned here uh, in this part of the story yet. Uh, her name is Taitsu, and tai Taitsu is actually the Japanese pronunciation. Uh, it's a loan word again. Uh, of the English word tights, uh, as you can see here on the screen. So these are uh, yeah, stockings, actually. They call them tights in uh, Japanese, uh, taken from the English tights. Uh, here a little funny story. So her whole family is uh, made up of names that reference 
uh, underwear or at least something related to underwear. And uh, Kulilin uh, meets Bulma again and it's been a long time since he's seen her and he refers to her as Pansesan. Uh, now I must say first time I read this I had to laugh out loud because Panse is uh, Japanese for the word pants, uh, taken from pants in English. And Panse is actually women's underwear, like the female variation of uh, brief. Um, and it makes Bulma very mad. She says, no, my name is not Panse. My name is Bulma. Um, as you can see here on the screen, you see Kululin say, uh, addressing her as Panse san, and she says, no, 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 it's Bulma. Uh, I thought that was quite funny. Okay, so now we come back to the um, Retto Ribengun, and uh, we're at the Blue Chutai. Now, I think I didn't uh, clearly explain that in my last video, so all the uh, divisions are addressed as color plus Tai, meaning core, an army core. Tai is army core. Uh, here, blue chu tai is referred to as chu tai, and I think chu tai is more like an army company instead of an army corps. Uh, I don't know the difference between the two. Uh, there probably is a difference, but I'm not well versed in that. So, if anybody with uh, some some information about that can comment, it, I, I would be really. Uh, happy to read your comments about that because uh, actually I don't know. I just know the words are different in Japanese. Uh, but the difference between an army corps and an army uh, company isn't quite clear to me. So anyway, this is the only part of the Red Ribbon Gun that is referred to as uh, Chu Tai, so a company instead of Chu. And their leader is uh, Blue Shogun. Now, Shogun, we already know, is means general. Uh, Bulu is uh, the Japanese pronunciation of the word blue, so it's general blue. And as I have mentioned, uh, these um, these characters, these red ribbon uh, leaders, often have uh, some part of their uniform or body that refers to the color uh, that is part of their name. And in his case, it's actually his deep blue eyes, which are actually referenced in the manga as well. He has very clear blue eyes. And uh, that's where his name Blue comes from. Now, uh, an interesting thing to mention is that uh, he uses what uh, is referred to in the manga as One Kotoba. One Kotoba, uh, here I'm going to have to explain quite a bit. Uh, one comes from One san, means older sister, or it can also mean a young lady. Right? Now, Kotoba means uh, words or vocabulary. So he uses one kotoba, means he's actually using uh, an effeminate male uh, way of speaking. So he uses a lot of words that are typical, usually used only by women, uh, like wayo and so on. And uh, they pointed out in the manga actually that he talks in such an effeminate way. And from there, uh, they make the deduction that he is an okama. Now, an okama is actually Japanese for a cross-dresser. Usually, these are men who dress uh, as women, who dress up as women with uh, female clothes, makeup, uh, wigs, and so on. And uh, it's actually a, a subculture in Japan. There are men who uh, like to dress up as women, who like to uh, behave as women. Uh, some of them, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it here, uh, are actually uh, famous people in variety shows. Like uh, here on the screen you see um, Matsuko Deluxe, who is uh, actually a performer in Japan. It's a man dressing up as a, as a, as a female, uh, using also a female name. Matsuko is a female name. And he created the character, so to speak, Matsuko Deluxe and appears uh, in TV shows uh, each and every time dressed as a woman. In Japan, you also have speciality uh, bars and uh, venues where you have men dressed up as women who will uh, entertain the guests. They are also called okama, so they're cross-dressing. 
And it's something that is really uh, well accepted in Japan, I must say. It doesn't mean they are tra transgender or anything like that. They just like to dress up as women and, and perform a part, so to speak. Um, and I believe the, the, the fact that this subculture exists in Japan and is uh, so readily accepted uh, comes from Kabuki. Now, Kabuki is a, a form of uh, traditional theater play. Uh, with a long history in Japan and originally uh, it was performed by both men and women both male and female actors but gradually it became uh, a kind of theater play that was only performed by men now there were both male and female characters in the plays so you had men who had to perform uh, actors who had to perform the role of the female characters and they dressed up and put up makeup, as you can see on the screen here, uh, to show their femininity. And some actors actually specialized in that and became quite famous uh, as kabuki players who portrayed female characters. So I think, um, historically speaking, there's a, a, a wide acceptance uh, for that kind of uh, in form of entertainment, I would say, uh, stemming forth from that tradition uh, that is kabuki theater. So that was a little bit of a sidestep here, but uh, I thought it inter it's interesting that we also dig a little bit deeper into, uh, into the historical and cultural aspects uh, of the names uh, connected to these characters. Uh, another member of the Blue Chutai is uh, Dokke, which is uh, uh, again written in Katakana, which uh, signifies it's a loan word. Uh, in this case, I think it's short for Dokke is short for doctor. And uh, uh, looking into some reference works and uh, some uh, information online, I found that uh, Toriyama Sensei actually based this character on an actu actual um, uh, person from the Nazi uh, regime, uh, Heinrich Himmler. And if you look closely at the picture and at uh, the, the drawing style of Toriyama, you can definitely see the same traits except uh, he, the character made by Toriyama Sensei, Dokke, is a, a lot more, uh, I, I would say, uh, volumey in size, a, a lot more, a lot fatter. Uh, but the character traits are definitely there with the glasses, the, the moustache and the uniform as well. Uh, the uniforms of the Red Ribbon Gun are actually quite heavily inspired from uh, Nazi uniforms. Okay, so with that, we have covered uh, Tankobon volume number six. Let's move on to volume number seven. And uh, in volume number seven, uh, there's a little bit of a crossover here because uh, Son Goku uh, falls down into Penguin Mura. Uh, Mura means village, so the penguin village. Uh, which is where the whole story of Dr. Slump takes place. Um, I could go into all the naming of the Dr. Slump characters here, but that would take us a little bit far. Maybe I'll make a separate video on Dr. Slump uh, later in the future. Um, but I'm just going to uh, quickly browse over it and, and just say that uh, he arrives at uh, Penguin Village here. From there, he goes to uh, Seichi Karin. Now, Seichi, Sei means holy, Chi means area or ground. Karin is just written in katakana, it's just a name. I couldn't find anything that referenced that name or that could have inspired that name. So the Karin holy grounds would be the correct translation, I would say. And um, there he encounters uh, his next opponent, which is Yellow Taisa. So that's the Taisa means Colonel, so that's Colonel Yellow, uh, part of the Yellow Tai, so the Yellow uh, Company uh, or Yellow Corps, so to speak. Again, uh, same thing here, so the leader of this corps uh, has his name directly taken from the color and or inspired by the color and uh, there's a part of his body that uh, is uh, in reference or references that color, namely the fact that he's a, a tiger uh, person and uh, so his fur is mostly uh, yellow in color from their yellow taisa. 
Uh, here we meet up with two locals, which are inspired by uh, Native Americans. The first one is uh, the father, Bora. And Bora actually is a, a, just literally a kind of fish called Bora. Uh, it's, uh, you see it on the screen here. It's a, a fish that is edible. Uh, and his name wasn't even changed. It's just literally the same name, uh, Bora, uh, for that, uh, that fish type. His son, uh, who is still uh, quite little, is called Upa. And Upa is actually a, a, a shorter version of Upa Lupa, which are these sea creatures that you see here on the screen. They're quite peculiar. Uh, and what I've noticed is that um, if you look at the sea creature, uh, its eyes are very similar to the character drawn by Toriyama Sensei. So Upa's uh, eyes are very uh, resembling that uh, that sea creature and uh, his feather in a sense as well the coloring of his feather uh, the, re resembles a little bit those uh, appendices uh, on the on the sea creature what i found also quite funny is that both bora the father and upa the son uh, have their names uh, inspired by fishes uh, and sea creatures and for dinner, for uh, for lunch uh, they're uh, they're frying some fish so <laughs> i thought that was maybe intentionally done so by uh, toriyama sensei so next up the red ribbon gun hire an assassin tau pai pai uh, to go after son goku now um, if we look at his name it's written entirely in kanji so in characters that carry a certain meaning now if i would look at his name uh, without uh, knowing the pronunciation i would pronounce it as momo haku haku or momo shiro shiro these are the native japanese uh, pronunciations of those characters momo means peach momo iro means peach colored and shiro or haku means white so uh, peach colored white white uh, we continue the tradition of the names being inspired by colors here uh, but the pronunciation is is very off and actually that's because here again as has been the case in the past toriyama sensei uses the chinese pronunciation of these characters uh, which make it tao pai pai and uh, in an interview apparently uh, he said that uh, he wanted this assassin character to have a name uh, that is uh, is rather cute sounding uh, and that's where he got his inspiration he he took those japanese characters looked up the the chinese pronunciation and thought tao pai pai sounded like a, like a, like a cute uh, like a cute name uh, for an assassin actually now a little bit more on uh, tao pai pai we see at the back of his uh, typical Chinese styled uniform uh, is uh, is the English words uh, kill you right uh, at the front uh, there's a symbol it's a uh, kanji and uh, this kanji is pronounced satsu and means uh, to kill like uh, uh, satsu jin is a killer uh, kill and human uh, a human killer uh, is a killer actually uh, so I thought it was quite interesting because here again we have uh, uniforms that have twice in a different language or in a different way uh, something referenced uh, on it, uh, but that actually refers to the same thing like we also had with Pilaf in, uh, in one of the previous videos. Okay, so at uh, Seichi Karin there's a, a very tall tower of which you can't even see the end called Karinto. Now that's simply to means tower, so the, the Karin Tower. Uh, Goku uh, climbs it uh, with a lot of effort and at the top he encounters Karin Sama. So the whole area there and the tower is actually named after this character, which is a, a speaking cat called Karin. Now again, Karin, I, 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 I didn't find any reference there where what it would uh, signify or where it comes from. Uh, sama means it's someone you need to show reference to. That suffix means you, uh, you, um, it's somebody that is higher in level than 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 you are. 
so uh, Karin Sama and uh, there's actually quite uh, an interesting bit here because as, as Son Goku talks with Karin Sama uh, he says that uh, oh wow you're also a Senin Sama so we, we encountered the word Senin before right with Kame Senin means a hermit somebody who has lived a long time who lives a solitary life usually and uh, who can can be a master of sorts um, so we have uh, sending sama and actually Karin says uh, yeah actually to be to be correct uh, you can call me actually a uh, sen bio sama so here you can see uh, of the three kanji, of the three characters, two are the same. The first one, Sen, the last one, Sama. And it's the middle kanji that is changed uh, to Byo instead of Nin. Byo is actually also pronounced Neko, means cat. So a hermit cat, so to speak. Now, this is a word that doesn't exist in Japanese. It's um, a bit of a, of a fun wordplay that uh, Toriyama Sensei did here. During his training there, uh, Son Goku needs to uh, try to grab the uh, Cho Seisui. Now these three characters, uh, we can just dissect them and it's exactly that meaning. Cho means super, uh, Sei means holy and Sui means water, so the super holy water. Uh, if he can drink that, he, he will become stronger uh, as the story goes. So after his training is finished, he's uh, quite uh, exhausted and uh, Karin-sama gives uh, Son Goku uh, Senzu. So this is the first time we see the Senzu. Um, most fans of Dragon Ball know what, what, uh, what the effect is when you uh, swallow or chew uh, uh, Senzu, then your vitality is immediately restored. Even if you're on the brink of death, you're immediately brought back uh, to full power, uh, full stamina. And uh, the meaning is actually in the word, because Sen, also we saw it in Senin, uh, right? A hermit, somebody who lives a long time. The word Sen in itself means immortality or immortal. And Z comes from, uh, is, is the second character, can also be pronounced Mame, means beans. So the beans of immortality. So the name itself makes a lot of sense. And uh, I know a lot of Dragon Ball fans uh, outside of, the, of Japan uh, tend to uh, talk about Senzu beans, but actually uh, the, the meaning of bean is already incorporated in the Japanese word, so you can actually just call them Senzu. He gave him a Senzu, so an immortality bean, uh, so to speak. Now, they don't really make you immortal, they just revitalize you. And with that, we have covered uh, all the chapters that we had to cover here. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please join me next time as we continue uh, with our exploration of the names of Dragon Ball. Take care. i see you guys next time. Jane. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, tap the notification bell and sound off in the comments. And hey, while you're here, why not check out another video?